Um, I would now like to introduce our next speaker. Um, Lord Mayor Hazel Chu is the Green Party councillor for the Pembroke Ward, and she is the current Lord Mayor of Dublin. She is the chairperson of the Green Party and former spokesperson on Enterprise. I'm delighted to hand you over to Lord Mayor Hazel Chu, who will speak with us here today. Thank you, and thank you uh, to all the speakers, and congratulations to the 25 global winners. My name is Hazel Chu. I am Lord Mayor, 352nd Lord Mayor of Dublin City. Um, I am first in the role that is a female from an ethnic minority, so it's it's quite a privilege and a massive honour. I started my term in June during this um pandemic so it's been a little uh, strange uh, and surreal as it has been for everyone on the call so firstly I just want to say a massive congratulations yet again to all the winners uh, on this call and to the organizers as well it's been 11 years now that the undergraduate award has taken place and it's uh, quite unfortunate that we're not able to gather here in Dublin and have the undergraduate awards, the Global, Global Undergraduate Awards uh, Summit take place here in Dublin. Uh, because for the last 11 years, it's it's actually been a great uh, venue to, to uh, have it in. And it's also a great destination for everyone to visit. Uh, for those who haven't been to Dublin, uh, it's a UNESCO uh, city of heritage. And um, it is brimming with culture and also livelihood. Uh, right now, not, not quite as much, but we hope to get back there. Uh, as with everyone else in uh, COVID times, it is a trying time for, uh, for all. Uh, on my part, I am the chair of a party that is in government. I am, uh, as I said, the first female Lord Mayor from ethnic minority to take this role. Uh, I am a Green Party councillor and um, also my top priorities for the city would be within um, environmental sustainability, uh, sustainable travel, making it into a 15 minute city, um, making sure that we uh, fight discrimination in the city. So integration is one of my top priorities as well. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and homeless and housing, because across the board in Ireland, we, we do have a homeless and housing issue. So working with other mayors in, in Dublin and across Ireland, that is our aim at the moment. Um, for yourselves, I guess um, it's great to hear the different projects taking place. It's great to hear the research. Uh, just hearing Maya's one there uh, was, was in fairness, it kind of harks back to a lot of what people I know in um, Hong Kong and China would be talking about in terms of uh, uh, caring for the elderly and how that piece of research is really important and that project. Um, for our own Dublin, so uh, having global winners and your projects um, reflect what is important in, in the community right now is essential. And again, this is why having annual events like this is important. I'm not going to delay you any further. I'm going to hand you back to the host, but I want to step in to say a massive congrats and to say thank you to the team at Global Undergraduates Award and to say thank you to all the global winners, but also all the attendees who who took the time out today to attend this event and uh, to hope that next year I'll be meeting you in person. Thank you. Hi Hazel, um, you don't have any time right now do you for questions by any chance? I do, I have a few minutes if you want to fire oh, them away. Brilliant, yes. Um, so a question an attendee has asked, what were the main challenges you have faced in your position? Uh, during COVID or in general? <laughs> um, let's make this general. <laughs> In general, um, I don't think you can actually separate the two. Sorry about that. Um, it's mainly because the position itself here for the Lord Mayor would be, there would have been a lot of ceremonial events. There would have been a lot of community engagement. And that is completely cut back at the moment uh, based uh, due to COVID. Um, insofar, we're now at level five uh, uh, restrictions. So that has been particularly challenging. So we have had to focus the office on different ways of outreach and also on my side because I would have been quite policy focused I would uh, have I now have turned it into more a policy reflective role so instead of what would have been ceremonial we've now kind of tipped it on its head and it's also why I'm 
I will be talking to, and I have been talking to the other mayors of the county and also nationwide to talk about directly elected mayors again, because I think there's a element of providing this office uh, a longer term uh, strategy and also longer term power as well in terms of what can be done for the city. So I guess the challenging thing is during COVID, there's just been a complete change to the role. Um, thank you very much. And another attendee has asked, what can citizens do themselves to help fight for more equal, a more equal and a more sustainable society? Well, the equality part, I would say, if if you are in any way engaged with activism, or even if you're not, just kind of step out there and challenge your local government officials uh, or even groups and community groups on what can be better when it comes to uh, fighting discrimination? Do we have enough in terms of gender? Do we have enough in terms of varied uh, and diverse religion, uh, diverse backgrounds? Um, do we have enough people at the table from every minority group, for example, or any minority group? Mainly because you can claim to be diverse in a society, but if you're not inclusive or tolerant, then that doesn't really matter. So I would first and foremost say to people, participate. Um, if, if you are asking from a citizen point of view, what can you do? My first thing would be participation. Make sure you ask people and challenge people on what plans are in terms of integration and strategy against discrimination. But then you yourself choose to be part of a, you don't have to be part of a party, you can be part of any any activity that will promote these ideas. Like I myself was in the corporate sector, I would have worked in, I actually worked in music, then I trained to be a barrister, then I worked for NGOs, then I worked in Sydney and, and New York, and eventually I went into crisis management in a, a, a multinational. And it wasn't until, running a campaign, uh, a political campaign that I got involved in politics. And then I got involved more because repeal was happening, marriage referendum happened before that I was involved in. And when you get involved in all these citizen led activities, a campaign, then you realize there's something that you may want to contribute further into. And that's when I joined the party and, and, and uh, ran for election and ran internally for stuff in the party. So. Brilliant. Um, one more question as well while we have you. So do you feel extra pressure beyond just being mayor, but by being the first ethnic minority represented as a mayor in Ireland? Uh, pressure, yes, but also you, you do notice the difference. I get, and um, it's it's literally, there is not a given day that my inbox or my DM, uh, actually I stopped checking DMs. If you ever find me on Twitter, I never check my DMs, so don't, don't even uh, send any messages there. But there is not a day that I don't get tagged uh, with some... Um, with with some bullshit comment or another about why like how did I make it into the role about that I uh that I'm at some kind of token minority to be in the role uh, that I should be deported and there there are those challenges because this is why I say you for any organization including political organizations and the gov gov government structures is that you can be diverse all you want but if you don't become inclusive if you're just a box ticking exercise then you're not going to get any further and to so for me you have that extra pressure of making sure you do more and and prove yourself more because the bar is raised higher like i would challenge anyone to tell me who was the last 10 Lord Mayors in Dublin and they won't be able to tell you yet somehow the first thing they come and ask you is what have you done uh, uh, immediately within weeks of you coming to term something they wouldn't have asked any other Lord Mayors because they simply would not have cared whereas now it's well you're different and you're in office so you tell me what and it's not because you're different in terms of party or, or, or person, it's you're different because in terms of we can see the difference in your skin color and the discrimination becomes very obvious then. Um, how do you have the resilience to deal with discrimination like that at work? I would, I, if I was being honest, I would say you don't. You like anyone who say that they, they don't take any of it to heart, uh, fair play to them, because uh, there are some parts you do, because when you are, you like, there was a report by Amnesty International that during the UK elections back 
in 2017, I think, uh, 16, 17, uh, that, di- that they broke it down and females got more of online abuse than the male counterparts that they had candidates. And then among the females, anyone of ethnic uh, minority got even more. And then ultimately, Diana, Diana Abbott got the most. So, and it was very, it was there in black and white to show that if you are a female in politics, you will get it. So you then have to learn on how to cope with it. And I'm not saying male, my male counterparts and colleagues don't get it, they do. And the question is like, my other half is, is ATD. He he sits in, in the Eroctus uh, for uh, those who don't know uh, what the Eroctus is here in Ireland. It's, it's I guess you would call it the Congress. So no, the, uh, the Senate. So I'm trying to differ, uh, differentiate the two. And and the thing is we, we have been a political family for a number of years now and either, either one of us could be caught sitting there on any given day going Jesus is it worth it so and you would you ask yourself those questions but then we also have a three-year-old so we would look at her and go you know what we either make things better and make it a better society for her or we don't and she, that that comes back to your for your um, panel's question one of your attendees question on how, why, or what would citizens do in terms of engaging? The question would be, why would citizens engage? And everyone has their own reasons. My one was very simple. I, I did it because I, I thought, well, my other half would, would, would create something, would create a better world. And once he got in, I kind of thought once I had my child, it was, uh, it was for her. So, and yeah, that's what you have to do. Like resilience is hard. Like it is tough for everyone. And I don't mean just me. I would recommend, especially in the current times that everyone has some kind of outlet. I just went online and bought myself a uh, punch bag. So a freestanding punch bag for my birthday. So so that should tell you how I uh, I uh, combat it. So. Brilliant. Um, thinking about that, because you've been speaking about how your own child is what part of what has motivated you what are your goals for the future not just as mayor but in general so top line would be that we still have a planet i know that's very uh, dramatic but it, it it we like climate change is, is real it's affecting the most vulnerable in our world so we either seize it now and be ambitious and do something about it so and we ourselves have a climate bill um that's in train uh, and we want to make sure we push it as far as possible and get what we can we have net zero plan for 2050 so uh, there are aims in terms of carbon emission in terms of what we can do for sustainable transport that's what we need to look at from a very first priority is making sure we have a, a climate to um, we, we have a world to live in second uh, is that we cannot and must not penalize those that are most vulnerable just because we are fighting for climate change. Like I come from a very working class background. I would have had between my, my family and my aunt's family, there was nine of us living in a three bedroom house. Like my parents would have been too busy trying, working two jobs each to, to think about politics. Their main aim was to put food on the table and make sure that we, we got through school uh, and they never had aspirations of us going to college. So, so my thing would be don't, I would not want in anything we enact to make sure that people that I grew up with would be the ones paying the price. So when we talk about the likes of carbon tax, what we should be talking about is fee and dividend in terms of taxing the fossil fuel companies as source and then repaying that and then using that subsidy to put back into people's pockets. So, and this is where your climate justice needs to go hand in hand with social justice. And I think that would be my top two priority. Uh, then following on that, you, you would have heard the, uh, the, the uh, fight against discrimination, which I mentioned uh, through this conversation, it's important to me because I get it firsthand. There is no denying that anyone I know or from my background, like I look at uh, Senator Eileen Nifyun, who is uh, a senator from a traveler community background, and she and myself would have had discussions on, we need to make sure that there is in integral integral to the overall national 
plans on what we aim to do is a anti-discrimination, anti-racist strategy, because the world is getting more and more into a polarized place. Like last week was a massive win in terms of um, returning Biden and making, oh, not returning, sorry, in, in terms of Biden getting uh, true. And hopefully you don't have uh, uh, people that would use Twitter to, to spread out any more racism, but that's a hope because it's in reality, that division is already there. And what we need to do is try to focus on how to bridge that d divide now and how to make sure that our politics and also overall what people think in terms of uh, in terms of race, religion, background, that it's not so divided because we all come from the same community. Bring it back to what's important in your community, especially those are things we've learned during COVID, that community is the most important. Your community shouldn't be divided by what religion you are or what race you are or what income you have. It should be purely on the fact that you share common space and commonalities together. And that will be one of my main aims. So I'm setting up an integration strategy here for Dublin. I hope to tie it in with the national integration strategy. And I think that would be a piece of work that will help from grassroots level upwards. Oh, um. Brilliant. I also have a quick question, just a more um, grounded question for, because I obviously the team here in Dublin, even though we're not able to move through Dublin at the moment, are looking at as we commute through Dublin. Um, would you compare Dublin's and to northern cities like Copenhagen in terms of their sustainable transport at this point? You can compare it, but you'll be falling massively short. So, uh, so yes, I will. I would love to to be able to hold Dublin up and say, "Yay, we're at Copenhagen." But no, like I, you're you're not even close to being a Paris at the moment, and that's the problem. So we have. COVID mobility measure plans across the board that has been doing really well. And that is uh, things like, for example, the Nash, uh, we, we have a street in the city center called Nassau Street. There has been a campaign going on there for a contraflow uh, cycle lane for about 20 years. When COVID happens, that cycle lane happened. And this is the thing with the unfortunate and tragedy that is COVID. It is, however, it's still, however, provided that opportunity. And I love to say the word opportunity with so many uh, uh, death, and, and death and grieving and, and mourning that we have to go through and, and losses, because at the end of the day, you don't want to see anything as an opportunity. But with COVID, plans have worked and we have done better in terms of sustainable transport. But no, in no way is it near a Copenhagen measure. If we are to even look at modeling across Europe, I would say Copenhagen is a great is a great uh, example. Uh, Italian cities, uh, Paris, like creating a 15 minute city is a great thing to do because at the end of the day, what we want to create is more cycle lanes and segregated routes, not just lines painted on the road, but proper segregated lanes so that people feel safe. Uh, opting for this alternative, uh, alternative sustainable transport means. But we also need better public transport. We need a metro system. We need um, a, a better bus system. And this is why I'm championing the Bus Connects uh, plans that are coming through because Bus Connects is a new plan uh, within Dublin City about the uh, kind of transforming the connectivity of the city um, through the buses that they have and we need to look and champion that and make sure that even though people some people don't like change like inherently you will have so many people who are so used to what they're they have that they don't want changes to it but for a city to progress and scale we have to have those changes especially when it comes to transport because when we look at the city and the layout of our city as i as i described it uh, the other day to a food lover it's like a donut and previously uh, it was like a donut with a filling so pick any filling you want it was a, a donut with a filling whereas now with covid it's a ring donut where there's where the hole is in the center. Previously, everything was in the center and all the periphery was just on the peripheral. Whereas now everything is in the peripheral and there is a hole in the center. And part of that hole is driven by the lack of sustainable transport. Uh, so people don't feel safe coming in. They think, oh, well, I don't want to drive in, but I don't want to cycle in because there's no proper cycle lanes or I don't want to get the bus in uh, because I'll be um, waiting too long, etc. So, So yeah, so it's not comparable. 
at this stage to other European cities, but it will be. So. Brilliant, Hazel. Thank you very much for your time in speaking with, with us here today about both practical Dublin matters and larger, more global issues that um, we are facing here in Dublin as well. Thank you very much for your time. No I really appreciate it. No worries. Good luck, everyone. Thanks. Thank you.